All right, Chris in the building. All right, man. That's what's going on. That's what's up. That's what's up. How, how you feeling today? What's what's uh, what's going on we in your part of the world? We got a little. We got a. We got a good dust in the snow down here in the Cincinnati area. It's coming down pretty good. Man, I'm up here. You know, I, I'm I'm in Ohio right now, but I'm heading towards PA up here uh, on the outskirts of New York. So I'm heading up here in the Rochester area. The I don't know this little city. It starts with an N. I never heard of it before, but. I, I look. I tell you, you get that lake effect. You get that lake effect snow up there in Upper New York, and it's crazy, <laughs> bro. I'm not trying to go up here, but you know, <laughs> it's, un, it's, unfor- it's unfortunate that I get a load that I that get loaded all the way in Florida, and then I gotta bring it all the way up here to New York. I'm thinking that. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm just gonna drop it off at my at my uh, terminal and then turn back around and go back down south. Nah, that didn't happen this time. <laughs> that's uh, truck driving yeah that's what's up all right so let's start with your story man go ahead and uh introduce yourself and uh let us know how you got started in uh started in trucking well it started off at working for my father uh at 22 years old he was a little he had a little fleet and um we were leased on to rwi down at the riley widow out of wilder kentucky well they were in cincinnati before Mr. Castellini bought the Reds and moved there, won the Wilder, but started off with him and uh, drove with him for a long, long time. And from there, went over to the Heavy Hall and uh, with Huff Contractors and then on with a big company out of North Dakota and um, did some dry band and reaper freight. And for the fan, then that went on for 10 plus years. And, and then Right in the middle of working for uh, Can Am Express out of Fargo, we uh, I went from a driver to a dispatcher, and now for the past fifteen years, I've been the logistics, uh, the senior logistics manager for um, a tanker, mainly gas and oil haulers here in the Cincinnati area. Okay, okay. So I've paid my dues, and um, and, I, and I'll tell you this is the one reason I like your show and. I can sit here and name about four or five other ones. I love truck driving, and and I I, I think it's the best job out there. And well, let's, and, um, let, let's talk about your little stint in truck driving. So you know, you started out with your pops way back in the day. How long you uh, how long you been driving all together? Like you know, how long you been driving before you stopped? Uh, about eighteen years. I did a million miles. Now let me ask you this. Now I, I I hear drivers, you know, with that type of accomplishment, you know, a million miles and all like that. Where where do you figure, especially for a driver that that goes from company to company, but where do you figure you accomplished a million miles at? Do you do you figure that in the five year, in the fifth year, in the tenth year? Where where do you figure you accomplished that many miles at? I would say it was about the 14th year. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and at that time we were with, uh, Can-Am Express out of North Dakota and, um, out of Fargo. And, um, that's where I entered about the million miles. Okay. Okay. Now for drivers, again, for drivers that, uh, that, you know, jump from company to company, uh, let's say for example, if they get to like, let's say they get the prime or something like that. And they, they already accomplished a million miles. Would, would prime in your opinion would give them that accomplishment? Or do you think they have to make that accomplishment with that company? I, you know what, unfortunately, if you're a job hopper and I've, and I've seen that podcast and, uh, which, you know, you're not going to ever be recognized. But if you put long, long uh, ventures in with each company, the company that you're with at the time will recognize you like I was recognized. And, um, and I think at that point, and unfortunately I did have an accident, nothing crazy, but enough to uh, scare the crap out of everyone. But, uh, 
but I was still recognizing. Like my pops did over two million accident free miles. Mm-hmm. And um now that's an he'd still be driving today if he, and he'd still be driving today if we let him. Now that is an accomplishment. So, two million two million safe miles. Yeah. We we talking yep. t- we talking about two million miles on the road with no accidents. Yep. I, I, I'll tell you, for almost 20, 20 years, 20 years, Cincinnati to L.A., Rancho Cucamongo area every week. Wow. That, Round trip and getting it done. Man, that is one hell of focus. Yeah, we were we were we were just at a, we were just at a truck show the other about a month and a half down in Destin and um and uh, we saw a, an old cab over and and he said now that's what I like to run right there and we run up there had the big doghouse we had to climb across the doghouse to get in the bunk <laughs> so these, these young people wouldn't know what that is nah these 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 new jacks they 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 wouldn't even they wouldn't even know the struggle. They they wouldn't even know the struggle. <laughs> so eighteen years, man. What was you? Uh, of course, back then, you you got what was called a a, a chauffeur's license, or did you I get started the- with, I started I, I started with it. I know you just started with a chauffeur's license, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna say, is it was it ninety something is when the CDL came out, and then we were grandfathered in without doing all the. Yeah, take the written test. That was it. Okay, okay, okay. So throughout the years, uh, throughout the years that you was running as a truck driver, man, um, what 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 are some of the things? What are some of the things that you that you you know that you came across that you enjoyed, and and maybe some of the craziest stuff that you have seen out there in your eighteen plus years. You know, one thing that aggravates me a little bit about all this right now is when I got started, 30 cents a mile, man, was the money to make. And I hear guys complaining over 55 cents to 75 cents. I I can think of different companies. They're all paying this different amount. But, you know, I just want to bring that up. But just the open road, having freedom to do what you want. And um, and that's what we do today at my current company is let the guys, you know, have their freedom and, um, unfortunately they don't get to pick and choose what they do, but, um, we do, uh, you know, you make, you make life good for the drivers. And I, and I see a lot of companies doing that. And if, and they had always, you know, you gave the guys the freedom, let them operate. Like, they're like, it's, you know, it's a business for yourself out there, you know? And, um, if you take care of the truck, take care of the equipment, 99 times out of a hundred, the companies are going to take care of you. All right, all right. So you uh eighteen years deep, man, before you switched over to uh in house. Uh how many trucking companies have you ha- have you drove for and have you ever been fired from any of them? I've drove for four and uh Wow, that's an accomplishment. No. Four trucking companies I've in never, a total I've never of eighteen been fired. years. I've never been fired, but they want to fire me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, you know, as I as as the more and more that I talk to you old school veteran drivers, man, the more and more excited that I that I get when I when I have a conversations with you, man, because 18 years and out of 18 years total, you you drove for four companies total. We 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 got. Total and that, <sighs> we let got, me tell you this: that my current my current company, where I am the senior logistics manager, we have we have eighteen trucks, right? Mm-hmm. I've got ten guys. I got ten guys with twenty five years at the company. I've got four guys with over thirty years at the company. And you know, I had this driver yesterday call me up personally and said, "Hey," he goes, uh, "I'm mad." I said, "Why?" He goes. I only got 10 hours in the day. <laughs> Don't be mad. <laughs> I said, he goes, if I'm not working 12, I'm not happy. I'm like, well, you're happy because you're making, you know, 45 bucks an hour. But, you know, 
<laughs> wow. Just relax for a minute. We'll get uh, so we'll get you taken care of. We'll we'll get it together, man. I mean, like I said, again, that's that's one hell of accomplishment for you, man. Four four companies, eighteen years. <sighs> wow. Um and, they, and the main part of that is the main part of that is you got to think about your family. I, I got some kids and stuff, and that's why I went into the office to, to watch my girls grow up. I have two girls that are were fabulous athletes, and uh, one's a big shot with Marriott Hotels, and one defends the country in the United States Air Force. And these are older girls now, thirty-one and twenty-nine, and um, that's what it's all about, really. In my eyes, take care of your family and. Um, and, and you got to put your family first and, and seeing your kids, put God bro. first family. So that's what's up, man. Uh, 18 years. Now you mentioned in, you know, in the beginning of our conversation, you, you mentioned that you said you, you, you did, you did get into an accident. Uh, you said it did, it did change you for a little, for a little bit, but you know, being that you got in, that you got into the accident, you you care to tell us what happened and 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 what was the result of it? Uh, coming over the hill from coming uh, eastbound uh, through Albuquerque, New Mexico. If you ever been over that way, there's a big hill that comes into right at the bottom of the hill is the Flying J, and um, we were up on top of the hill, and the driver said, "Hey, hey," they said it was snowing out. They said the hill was slick. Everyone, be careful. Mm-hmm. And um, and one thing I'll have to say, I, I have never been a cowboy. Well, I got passed by a couple cowboys. And I thought, you know what, let's roll. I think it's okay. And um, we got up to the top of the, I got to the top of the hill and, and looked down, two car, and then two trucks were laying on their side. And my goal was to uh, hit them or put it in the median. And I decided to put it in the median and drop it over and, Scared the living crap out of me, but nothing happened to my freight. Okay. Truck got beat up a lot, but we're all safe, so that's all that mattered. Did at at the time of that accident, uh, did you say to yourself like, "This isn't the career for me"? Like, I, I I'm I'm scared shitless to to, to continue on. <laughs> no, I didn't have time to think about nothing. I was I was more after the accident. I was more worried about where am I and what just happened. Wow. So I, you know, so after you, uh, you know, you got the good, clean bill of health and everything and you got, you know, you got right back into the truck. Um, 18 years, man. I mean, it's, it's Bill and, and then, uh, you know, I was a nervous wreck for a couple of weeks after that. And, um, but it all worked out. Back then, back, you know, back then when you, when you started with your old man, uh, it coming into you know the new technology of what of what the industry is now, in your opinion, and and you seeing it from both sides of the fence, and that's that's a hell of a thing. You know, a lot of a lot of new drivers that come in and they get dispatched out by their managers and all like that. They sort of like you know like college kids or kids coming out of the college and and stuff like that you actually seeing it from both sides of the fence in your opinion what do you yes. what, what do you think is the matter with trucking today i think it's the brokers and um and uh, the brokers have taken control of the customers which i think is so customers do not use the company trucking companies enough and um everyone has to go through brokers to get loads and if you, for some way, I mean, you, and I'm not beating up on anybody like TQL, CH Robinson, Coyote, you know, everybody wants you to work on these apps and stuff like that, man, I want to talk to somebody, you know, and, and if you're, and if you're in a business where you can talk to the actual customer yourself, I think that's where you're going to benefit. But now everyone wants to deal with the brokers. So they can talk you down and make you run pennies on the dollar. Now, now let's talk about now let's talk about the flip side. Now you you you're in office. Uh, you seeing, you know, you seeing things from a logistical side, and you're actually you know dealing with these said brokers. So how what's what's the what's the challenges that you face as far as getting freight for your drivers? I don't, I don't settle. I, unfortunately, I don't want, I'm not trying to be negative, but 
but I, I don't settle for anything cheap. I won't do nothing cheap. So, you know, they're trying to talk you down because remember they're making 50% or whatever they can get off the bottom line. And we're, my company, we're set at a certain rate and we stay at that rate. And I like to go over it, but I won't go under it. I'll leave my guys sit at home. And they will still get paid. But again, we're, but right now we're currently on short haul. So, you know, everything we do is terminal to, or is, uh, is a uh, fuel terminal to depots across, uh, you know, Southern Ohio, Northern Kentucky and Southeastern Indiana. So. All right. So last year, you know, well, not last year, but year before last, you know, we got hit with the, with the pandemic, which changed the, which changed the face of, of everything, uh, logistics, uh, personal and all that other good stuff. How did that, how did that affect your, how did that affect you, your company and the drivers during that time? Well, it didn't affect us as bad as it did other people because, you know, you had to put fuel in the truck. So, by supplying the fuel to the trucks that kept us busy and, um, you know, and our drivers were able to keep a steady, you know, a steady wage. And we really didn't have to cut back too far. We were always busy. All right. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Now, as far as, as far as, uh, the, the, the Corona pandemic, you know, like I said, changed the face of everything beforehand, you know, truck drivers was looked at as, as second, second class citizen. <clears throat> Back in back in the time that you was driving, how was how how was you know how was drivers being respected back then versus not being respected now? Not respected at all because you know they were um, you know again they were second they never gave people the chance and um, and the drivers were always taken advantage of so. Oh, this sounded like somebody was in the background. <laughs> well, that that was that was. I am on top of being the senior logistics manager. I'm also a high school varsity basketball coach. <laughs> okay, we're, we're good. I'm sitting here. You're looking at hey, I'm looking at the big yellow bus. They warm up. You know, I got driving up the road tonight. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Again, thank you for taking the time out to to chop it up with me, man. Uh. So being yeah. so, you know, like I said before, so from being on the inside and you seeing everything, uh, everything as a driver, you yourself as being a driver knows what the drivers go through. So with with your, you know, with the with the drivers that you, you know, that you cater to, they will say that you're you, you're a good guy to work with because you was already a driver per, uh, previously. Yep, and I think that's my number one priority. If there's a problem, I can fix it. I can help fix it right there at the spot. We don't have to make 10 calls, the maintenance and everyone else, and I can make it happen on the spot. But, hey, trust me, there's times where they don't. You know, there's that guy that doesn't want to work 12, 14 hours a day, you know, and he only wants to put eight or nine in, and sometimes he has to work 12. He ain't too happy, but, you know, it is what it is, I guess. What about what what about misconceptions? Uh like I said, you now you've seen it from both sides of the fence. So what are what are, what are some of the big biggest misconceptions that you came across hauling for, you know, maybe your company or hauling for previous companies? Um none really. It's just, you know, it, it's the way the driver does the job. You know what I mean? If, if you take pride in what you do, you're going to do it right every time. If you don't take pride in your job, you're going to slip up a little bit. All right, that's what's up. 18 years of uh, of driving, you know, doing good as a logistical logistical ma uh, manager. What while you was driving out there doing the damn thing, man? What was some of the sights or experience that you encountered while you was over the road? Well, road rage, and uh, I, you know that was my biggest fear. And but mainly the sights and sounds and the smells of everywhere you go. Everywhere you go is a little different. If it's Minnesota, North Dakota, or Florida, it's all a little bit different. 
All right. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. What a... Hey, before we get on up out of here, I got one more question for you because I know you're a little bit busy over there trying to get your kids ready for this big basketball game. But what are some of the major challenges as, you know, that, that truck drivers face? Hey, right now they face is parking is the big, biggest concern and uh, getting taken care of. No offense, these guys need to get in the shower. I mean, my... <laughs> I, I got. I, I do deal with a lot of over the road guys, and today that's their biggest challenge: finding a place to take a shower and park and get a good meal. Nine out of ten of my guys I know that do over the road, they have their own bike ways, the fridges, and then get it done right there. But in the long run, they just uh, they need a place to park, take a nap. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. With that, and I hate with these grocery stores; they get crazy and don't let you park in a lot that no one else uses. You know, right? And somebody tell me where, when did Walmart start putting up low bars? I seen that. I, I couldn't tell you. I, I've seen that a lot, especially down uh, down in Florida. I've seen that they, you know, when you come up in their parking lot, they got the low bar, like the 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 ten high, the uh, the ten high bar, so that truck drivers can't come in. And yeah, that part. Anyway. All that, right. That's bull crap. All right, brother man. Well, thank you very much for coming on, man. I really do appreciate it. You are a citizen. Thank you. You uh take it easy and make sure that your kids get a win tonight. Go Bulldogs and um I got your number. I'll keep in touch, my man. I appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate you. Thank you. Bye, buddy.